Okay, so so why are we all here? Well, hopefully uh, we're here because we're enthusiastic about the Jamstack, curious about the Jamstack. And before we kick off and get uh, Matt to come up and, and start the start the day with the keynote, I just wanted to give almost like a tiny primer about the Jamstack. So many of us will be familiar, but let's not assume that everyone is 100% familiar. And let's just talk very, very briefly about what the Jamstack is. And the, the Jam uh, stands for JavaScript, APIs, and Markup. But this is, you know, this is a name, this is a convenient label we found. Um, it's had names in the past. You know, you might you might be able to argue that well, this is an approach to building sites which has been around for a while. You know, you might have, in addition to being uh, talking about Jamstack sites, you might have talked about or heard about pre-rendered sites or static sites, or you might have heard about CDN-ready sites, sites that can get to a CDN straight straight away. Um, the term Jamstack came along at a convenient time for me because I was starting to describe exactly this kind of thing as the short stack. You know, a stack which is shorter. Than, uh, that doesn't include so many uh, moving parts as a traditional uh, uh, web development stack, uh, and also pancakes. Um, uh, also, you may have heard people talk about web serverless. It's, it's, it's pretty much all describing the same thing, and it's a, ty a way of building sites, a way of, of hosting sites and getting sites out into the world that, that we're enthusiastic about, and I, th I think we'll see a lot of that throughout the day. Um, but let's just go into a tiny uh, bit more detail. You know. Uh, this kind of site is something that's able to be served directly from a CDN. You know, we don't have logic at play on a server that you have to maintain. We can kind of remove the origin server, if you like, which sounds scary, but there's opportunities abound as a result of that. It also means that this is a site that you can then enrich adi with additional services. So the A in, in uh, Jamstack being APIs and the, and the J being JavaScript, we can now start to, in the client, enrich sites further with JavaScript and, and pull more uh, content and functionality through things like progressive enhancement right in the client side. Um, that's another attribute that you, can, that you can associate with Jamstack sites. So if just to kind of compare very quickly a traditional stack to the Jamstack, um, let's just break it down just for a moment and think about you know, how something comes from uh, the, the browser, gets into the, u the user's eyes in, in the browser. So from the browser, making a request, this is a simplification, but perhaps we're hitting some resources that are on a CDN, but probably more likely we're hitting an origin server, which is potentially sitting behind some load balances that we, that we manage. There's logic on those load balances that will then route the request to uh, one of several web servers that we've got to make sure that we can handle the load, distribute the load, we manage the logic on those. Those, those web servers aren't necessarily ready to return the request right away. We might be making uh, further requests to a database uh, somewhere on one of a number of database servers to figure out what content we need to put into a template to enrich it. We pass that back to the web server, assemble that view in a template, pass that back through the load balancer, perhaps cache some of that on the CDN, uh, make it available for the subsequent visits. But you know, if these are dynamic requests, we might be doing this route every time. And then finally, we'll return a view to the, the user and into the user's eyes uh, through their web browser. So this is kind of a, obviously a fairly uh, a big simplification and generalization of that kind of traditional stack. But when we're comparing that to the LAMP stack, so the, the JAM stack, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that shouldn't have happened. <laughs> if we compare that to the, the JAM stack, you know, we're making a request and then we're going to the CDN, which has the, the, the view already there prepared and sitting there on the CDN, waiting for the user, and then it returns it and we're done. So this kind of simplification is something that really excites me. I look for simplification wherever possible. That was something, I, a theme that I heard a couple of times uh, in the agency day yesterday that really chimed with me. And so you can see some advantages here of like less, fewer moving parts and kind of less, fewer things that could potentially go wrong. Um, let's just unpack that a tiny bit more. You'll be rid of me soon. We'll be we'll be on to the talks, but um, I just wanted to just describe a tiny bit more about this. You know, if we're looking at this request that goes through a CDN and then gets returned, on top of that, we can enrich that further. I mentioned this enrichment, and we can be doing that with requests to other services and to microservices. Maybe we manage elsewhere. Maybe there are other vendors and other services out there we can leverage, and those requests can go you know directly from the client. Um, or you know they could be going through the CDN. Uh, Matt showed a, a really nice demonstration of that yesterday. Um, and indeed, these services and these microservices might be things that we leverage at build time. You know, and the build uh, is, is what we need to look after in order to get things out to the CDN. 
And in this kind of environment, there's still a lot of moving parts there that you might, you might think of, but this is really the only piece of infrastructure we necessarily need to control. And so the overhead for us is, is quite different. Um, and I think that's where lots of opportunities uh, come into play. So the idea that, that we have this set up really means that we can empower front-end developers because we've shortened that stack. There are fewer things that the front-end developer needs to, needs to manage in order to be a very powerful web developer. Uh, and empowering front-end developers is a theme we'll hear from Chris Coyer a bit later on in his talk. Um, this kind of approach is really powered by modern browsers and the capabilities that they have. And we're going to hear uh, content as well uh, uh, about that uh, from, an, uh, from Monica and from others throughout the day. Um, I mentioned this kind of this term enhanced and we can enhance the uh, the experience we can enrich that uh, through the the great ecosystem of uh, tools and services that are now blossoming around the Jamstack some of the sponsors here are involved in that and there are many many more tools and services that we can leverage and it's a really exciting time and all of this kind of impacts our processes the way we build things even the culture around uh, the web development landscape we're going to hear things to do with that from Jessica throughout the day and this kind of culminates in a really effective and efficient way of building sites, a really effective way of getting results that are very performant out to the world. And I hope we'll show that along the way uh, today as well. We'll hear from, from Quincy, and I think this theme might come up a few times throughout, throughout the day. Okay, so primer done, intro done, code of conduct done. You found the refreshments. I think we're probably ready to, to start with the day. Yes, okay, I'm getting a thumbs up. Uh, uh, approval to launch, okay.